Do you have to spend mad stacks of cash getting good gear for your self-defense rifle? Or can you buy some bargain basement stuff and still find good equipment out there that's not airsoft garbage? We're here to take a look today at the Tacticon Armament, Red Dot, and Magnifier. Welcome back to OG's Danger Show. One of the things that I set out to do when I started OG's Danger Show a little under two years ago was to bring you information about self-defense techniques and training and gear that would make you more effective when you're out there protecting yourself and your family in these crazy times we live in. If you're like me, you get a little tired of the YouTube reviews that talk about super high-end items that we, the average Joes, can't afford to buy for our personal loadout. Like most of you, I've always tried to find the best gear at the lowest price. And when I was young and stupid, I bought garbage. Any garbage that looked cool and promised to make me a better shooter. If it was endorsed by a retired SEAL or a SWAT cop or even the Incredible Hulk, I was all in. Unfortunately, this led me to buying a lot of cheap crap over the years. Now that I'm older, but still not that smart, I realized that spending a few extra bucks and getting some good gear makes all the difference in the world. And most of the gear we're talking about is stuff that you will bet your life on. The trick is to get the best gear at the lowest price without wasting your ducats on cheap airsoft crap, no offense Sean, the wolf of the dark woods, for your serious self-defense use. Well recently a nice girl named Emma from Tacticon Armament contacted me and asked if I'd be interested in testing out some of their products here on the show. Now I get these types of solicitations a lot, usually by email. I get offers to push video games on you, whoring myself out to Olight, that's happened several times, and even talking with you in a serious face about investing in gold. Now I delete about 99% of these offers since they aren't the thing you come here for, and they would just clutter up the show and allow me to make a couple extra pennies. But here's the thing about Tacticon Armament. It's got armament right there in the damn name. And that's the first thing that caught my eye. In her initial email, Emma also mentioned that the company was a local company. Local-ish. Located just a couple hours north of me in Rancho Cordova, California. Which is another green check mark on my list. And then she mentioned that the company was owned by a military veteran in his family. And that was the final thing that convinced me to return Emma's email. She asked me to look through their website and see if there was anything that interested me for testing on the show. Now, Tacticon sells plate carriers and body armor and belts, scopes, magazine pouches, sights and weapon lights and holsters and all kinds of other goodies that us dudes like to waste our wives' money on. Well, I'm kind of an optics nerd, and I love putting them on pistols and rifles and shotguns. So the thing that first caught my eye was a red and green dot rifle sight called the Predator V1. It's a sight that looks exactly like the Aimpoint Comp ML that I used to have, but instead of costing me 550 bucks for the Aimpoint, I was excited to see this Predator V1 priced at $59. Now I'm sure you're saying to yourself, oh gee, don't do it, you're wasting your time on knockoff airsoft crap that even LARPers would sneer at. And I've got to admit that when you see prices like that, you pretty much figure it's the tactical equivalent of Harbor Freight Tools. You're going to use it once and it'll fall off your rifle in pieces and mixes with your tears on the sandy range deck. Well, I picked out this sight to test, figuring I'd most likely destroy it, taking it out of the box. In her email, Emma also offered to send me their Falcon V1, which is a red dot magnifier, and said that those two things went nicely with their flip-up iron sights. 
Now, call me your gear hooker, but I was now kind of excited at the prospect of testing this stuff and seeing if I could get it to break under regular non-combat style conditions. As you can see here in this unboxing segment, the Predator V1 Red Dot and the Falcon V1 Magnifier, they both arrived in a very cool black box with the Tacticon logo screened on the outside. The Red Dot came mounted to a cantilever base, which I found out later was very important for this project. The Falcon 1 Magnifier came with a hinged mount that allows it to swing out of the way when it's not needed on top of your rifle. And Tacticon thought of everything. Obviously you need the magnifier to match up with the Red Dot. So Tacticon includes a small metal shim and all the hardware you need to mount it under your magnifier to get that perfect height. I didn't have any problems mounting these two items right out of the box though. The shim wasn't even necessary on this rifle project. I bolted the Red Dot sight and its magnifier along with the rear flip-up iron sight that Tacticon sent me to my test rifle. Now, because of some goofy YouTube rules, I can't show you the installation of these things on the rifle, but trust me, if you've got the intelligence of a shoe, I'm pretty sure you can figure this part out. Now, this test rifle happens to come with a fixed front sight tower. That's how I prefer most of my rifles. And therefore, I didn't need Tacticon's flip-up front sight, but I definitely wanted to use their flip-up rear sight because I'm a big believer in backup iron sights anytime you're running an optic that requires batteries. You'll see here why that cantilever scope mount is so important for that red dot. It pushes the red dot forward, allowing you room to fit all of this stuff on the limited real estate on top of your rifle. So maybe I'm just dumb? Well, actually, not even maybe. I'm probably not qualified to operate on such equipment, but I found this rear sight kind of difficult to master. It has a little tension adjusting screw on the left. I would either adjust it too loose or too tight too tight and the rear sight won't even pop up too loose and the rear sight pops up and I couldn't get it to go back down and you'll see here that it has a little plunger system very similar to the magazine release on an AR-15 if I unscrewed the little screw too far on the left hand side the little plunger would fall out on the right hand side and I just could not get the thing in the right position and by the way it has a little exposed spring which I thought was a little bit fragile for something that you might be out there bumping around and using to bet your life on. The large aperture, what we call the CQB aperture, as well as the small aperture flipped up just perfectly like any typical AR-15 A2 style sight. And I found them to be automatically in line with the red dot optic. So they co-witnessed just perfectly without any kind of adjustment. So that was kind of cool. I'll give you more thoughts about this rear flip up sight in a little bit. Every time I take a rifle and scope or a rifle and red dot system out to the range, I film the entire process of sighting it in. And it turns out to be hours of video that is actually rather boring. So let me throw a little music montage in here and show you how I sighted it in at 25 yards and then confirmed it again at 50 yards on a paper target on a static range. So just like the aim point comp system, the windage and elevation knobs are very easy to adjust using any flat blade screwdriver, the edge of a dime, or even the base of a shell case. The sight has brass adjustment knobs with very positive clicks, so it's very easy to count how many clicks up or down you need to go. that uh, optic over one final time a couple of clicks right I went too far left and a couple of clicks up I overshot down overshot left so a couple of clicks reversed put it in the circle or in the black square and let's get this done just uh, ran a few more rounds the clusters downrange are actually very tight so this Tacticon green dot side is actually holding a pretty damn tight group. Little three little uh, clusters the size of my pinky uh, fingernail though. Not bad. We're getting close to being dialed in. So I'm going to speed this up for you, get us dialed in. And then uh, once we're punching that black circle, we're going to try it with the magnifier 
and put our target out at the 50 yard range. Two rounds out of a three round group. How about round number three, Jake? This green dot at 25 yards looks about, uh, I don't know if I'd say the size of a soda can, but definitely a silver dollar. So it's covering up a big portion of that black uh, square. It's actually kind of surprising that we're able to print those tiny little clover leaves. I'm kind of impressed with that group. Okay, that last group put two rounds in the black. I felt like I pulled one to the left and I'm betting that's it. I'd say I'm pretty happy with that at 25 yards. Why don't you come with me down range? Let's plug this thing in at 50 yards slap up that magnifier and see what we can do with these other two black dots. All right, we are 50 yards out. I'm gonna leave you guys here to watch for me, please. Let's try and put some uh, rounds in this top square. First time. Now, while I found the rear sight to be a little hard to manipulate, I thought that the magnifier was actually pretty damn easy. You push in on this spring-loaded plunger, and the magnifier snaps right over into place. The one thing you do have to keep in mind is the magnifier has to be out of the way to put your scope covers on the red dot. And since I was a buffoon and couldn't get the rear sight to reliably fold down and stay locked, I found myself having to lower the rear sight swing the magnifier over into place and it would hold the rear sight down. This didn't always happen. A couple of times I was able to get the rear sight to lock in place, but as a guy who's used to the simplicity of Magpul backup iron sights, I found this one to be a little complicated and a little less user friendly, let's just say. I think we're in there now. Let's go ahead and try and snap up this magnifier, three power magnifier. Never used one of these before. Turning our red dot, turning our green dot into uh, almost like a scope. We've moved our target out to 50 yards, so let's take a look and see what it'll do. Now my Hollywood style camera skills are probably not the best. Getting a true sight picture through an optic like this is a little difficult because of the magnification and the green dot. Okay, I think I'm figuring out this magnifier's adjustment screws. Once your green dot is sighted in on target, it's your primary optic. The magnifier, however, needs to be centered. To put the center, to make it centered, you're just dialing that green dot down in the center of your uh, magnifier glass. So we were completely high and left a second ago. Um, doesn't mean that the optic's off. It means that the magnifier was looking that direction. So we pulled it down and right. Let's take a look at 50 yards. The green dot is perfectly round in this picture now. I'll have to show you guys here on camera, but uh, the green dot comes out looking perfectly round. No fuzz, no haze, nothing around it when you're looking at it through the magnifier. It also looks pretty goddamn big. Looks like the size of a salad plate over that uh, head shot down there at 50 yards. So it has magnified the green dot also along with the picture, making it uh, mm, less than precise, let's say. This was one of my magnified groups right here. Uh, and this was a magnified group right here. These don't count. So I was aiming right here with the magnifier. Those don't count. I was aiming right here with the magnifier. I ended up dropping them a little low. The group's not all that bad, you know, size of my thumb for um, 50 yards. And remember, it's a red dot. It's not a rifle scope for hunting. It's not made for super precision. This was the other three dot group. I like the size of the cluster. Again, just a little bit low. That's something I can adjust. That's not the optimal fault. Here was the problem with the magnifier. Whenever I clicked the magnifier over, it brought this entire bad guy up a lot closer. I could see him a lot closer. Uh, let's say I was shooting across a parking lot and uh, I had a bad guy over there with a gun and I needed to zap him. Um, when I clicked that magnifier over, I could see him zoom into my field of view a lot clearer. However, the big green dot, I'm gonna show you here approximately what I was seeing. The big green dot took up about this much of his face so me trying to hit pinpoint accuracy was a no-go i've never had a magnifier so i have no experience with this so um it could be me it could be that i need to you know take a little time getting used to this thing and figure out how to deploy it a little bit better but overall the combo is pretty cool 
Okay, now that we've done our homework, it's time for recess. I took this thing out to a more open range, a little more practical shooting situation. I set my challenge steel target out at 100 yards. And if you remember from previous videos, the challenge steel target is just the face of a bad guy and his vitals. So any hit on steel is a good fight stopping hit. All right, I'm 100 yards out. I'm gonna shoot from this little concrete parapet here. I'm gonna give it a try first with just the red dot. I'm gonna set it over on red, about medium brightness. Let's give it a try out there at 100 yards at this steel with just the simple dot and then see if we're gonna need the little three power magnifier right behind it. Let's give it a try. Hitting it with the simple red dot. Shit. Looks like we're hitting it every time. Got a malfunction in this super dirty rifle. One last round. From the seated position, 100 yards, red dot. Actually, let's zoom it over to green. See if that makes any difference. Again, sometimes the lowest setting on this is still a little bit too bright, but uh, out here it seems to be doing okay. There it is, 100 yards with the green and the red dot. That's pretty cool. Let's try it with a magnifier now. Simple push of that little piston and rotate it over. Move my rear side out of the way if it doesn't want to spin down. Let's see what we can do. 100 yards with this magnifier. Does it help or hurt the situation? You can see the target much better through it. suppose I should push that target out to 200 yards, but that's a long damn ways to walk and it's getting hot out here. So overall, I really liked this Tacticon setup. I very much like the red and green dot sight. That was uh, super practical. It turned out to be pretty sturdy for these purposes. And I like the option of going between red and green in the different brightness settings. I also really liked the magnifier. It's going to take me a while to get used to this such a thing. The magnification of the laser dot on the target uh, took me a minute to get used to, but I was still able to do some decent work with it. The thing I could probably leave behind is the rear sight. It seemed to be kind of flimsy made. It has an exposed spring. And as you can see in this video, I lost the plunger on the right side of the sight as I was adjusting the screw on the left side of the sight. Now it still worked but it did not lock down into place and I had to manually hold it down every time I moved that magnifier over. So at this point, I'm not 100% convinced that the front and rear sights would be durable enough for a law enforcement and especially a military scenario. Now, if you're interested in picking up any Tacticon armament gear, take a look through their catalog. I want you to go down to the comment section below this video, not the description section, but the comment section because of YouTube rules and pinned to the top, you're going to find an affiliate link. If you click on that link, it'll take you over to Tacticon armament. You'll be able to buy the same gear, same exact price, but OG's danger show will make a couple of ducats on the side. And I appreciate your help. Okay, so I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me here today and taking a look at the Tacticon armament gear that they sent me. Um, I was actually kind of pleasantly surprised with this stuff. I think it's probably got its place. Again, if you're deploying to Fallujah or Mariupol or any other place like that anytime soon, I would say you probably want to get official, good, higher dollar equipment. But for around your home, your ranch, and definitely out at the Plinkin range, I think you're good to go with gear like this. And at those crazy prices, you just about can't go wrong. So it's worth giving it a try, even if it's just for fun, set it up on a fun range gun until it proves itself to you. And then once you can feel like you can bet your life on it, then go ahead and mount it on your home defense gun. 
If you're not already a subscriber, go ahead and reach down here and hit the subscribe button, please. Reach over here and hit that stupid little bell so that you'll be alerted every single time I upload more crap on the internet. And uh, I appreciate you guys for stopping by. If you haven't already noticed, things are getting kind of nutty out there. And I want you guys to stay armed where you are legally allowed to do so. More importantly, especially for those of you around the world who maybe you can't carry an AR-15 around with you, use your head. This is what's going to protect you a lot more than this thing. So thanks for stopping by. Stay safe out there. And until next video, OG out. Thank <laughs> you.